A few videos back I listed 5 cameras that I wish I would have kept. And that had me thinking about the other end of the spectrum. What cameras do I regret buying in the first place? Before we start I should remind you that I have a rule of only owning 2 cameras at a time. So in order to buy one I must sell one. That's why I can't keep every camera and why the consequences of a bad purchase can't always be saved by a simple return. First up we have my 7 or 8, I can't really remember, Sony RX100 models I have had. My first disappointment with the line was back with the Sony RX100 II. I remember going out during sunrise to capture video just to find that the battery had drained overnight. And since then it's been a similar story. I really want to love these cameras because they have so much going for them. They really could be a Swiss army camera, but in real life I can't seem to get along with them. They feel a bit sluggish and I can't say that they have been all that reliable. I would be afraid to bring one as my only camera on let's say a trip. And that is a tough one to swallow for a do-it-all pocket camera. But if you get along with them, all I can say is congratulations. You have a very nice stills camera and a surprisingly powerful video camera in a pocketable format. There is one more Sony on this list, so let's get it out of the way quickly. The Sony a7 II was a real disappointment for me. You know I love the original a7, you can find several videos about it on my channel. The a7 II sounded like a good deal with IBIS and S-Log added, but in real life a mediocre IBIS and the S-Log was the first time I encountered Sony's sickening color science. Which I must add have become much better nowadays. And they had also removed the, in my opinion, really nice controls and added small dinky plastic dials. Since then it's gotten even worse with a fully articulated screen. This experience have stuck with me and is why I haven't reviewed popular and probably very good cameras like the a7 III. I'm sure they are great, but since I buy the cameras I review and must sell the one I have, I just can't risk it. I might add that Sony lent me an a7S III a while back, which I haven't reviewed because I simply didn't like it. And now when the FX3 is out, I can't really see the point of the a7S III at all. It's just the same camera, but less usable for video. And if you are a hardcore stills guy, you most likely are looking at the other models anyway. Thirdly, I want to mention the Canon 1DC. It sounded like a great promise, a 1DX Super Pro still shooter with a cinema camera built in. And all the praise of its fantastic video image online made me take the leap. But sadly, I was super disappointed. The stills were amazing, no doubt, but the video was just okay. At the same time you could buy a 5D Mark III for a third of the price, which in my opinion with Magic Lantern was and still is a much more powerful cinema camera. In a smaller and sleeker package and with stills good enough that I still see them all the time being used by pros. The Fuji X-H1 Ah Fuji, it was so close to perfection. When first seeing the reviews, I was intrigued. First time holding it in a store and listening to the super quiet shudder, I was sold. I've actually bought it twice since then. First for myself and then again to see if it could be a good fit as a hybrid at my job. But I ended up advising them to buy a Canon EOS R instead. As a stills camera, it's fantastic in my opinion. But the grip, which while casually holding it super comfortable, is at least for me and my quite large hands not very pleasant when actively working the camera. And that's one of those things I just can't get by. And as a video stills hybrid for work it was just not doable. It was too slow to switch between video and stills. Also I would need to use adapted lenses to get proper manual focus for video and then switch back to native for fast autofocus stills. 
it would simply be too much of a hassle. But you might be in luck if you don't have any need for super quick hybrid shooting and if you find the grip okay, then it's in my opinion the most bang for buck Fuji out there. Last camera on this list is actually the last camera I bought. And I must say that I'm thoroughly surprised. It's the Ricoh GR3X. If you watched my earlier video about it, you know I kind of liked it. Not as much as the 28mm equivalent version, but still thought I would buy one down the line. And I did. After having a baby, it seemed perfect. I constantly find myself using a 35 or 50mm when taking pictures of her and lots of macro. But as always, if a camera isn't in my pocket, I tend not to capture the images I want. So I bought the GR3X, but for some reason I still keep grabbing one of my bigger cameras if I can. It could be partly because it's not as fast as for example the GX9, but when out and about in other errands, I tend not to use it as much as I would with the regular GR3. I guess it's the wrong focal length to be my pocket camera and the wrong body to be my family and travel camera. So that's it, 5 cameras I should have left alone. Let me know in the comment section what cameras or perhaps accessories you wished you would have just skipped.